RAS1, or the Improved Rubber Agroforestry System Type 1, is similar to the traditional rubber agroforestry, in which farmers plant rubber but allow natural vegetation to grow in between rubber. However, high latex yielding clonal plants are planted, instead of inferior unselected seedlings. Weeding intensity is also significantly less than in intensive monoculture plantations. The objectives of RAS1 are to reduce the cost of rubber garden establishment but increase its latex productivity and to practice more conservation oriented cultivation for biodiversity management and local hydrology. The land used for RAS1 may come from old jungle rubber, secondary forest or shrubland. RAS1 technology is appropriate where family labour and financial resources are limited, the plantation area is large and communities traditionally practice a jungle rubber system. Kami melaku, eh, mau melakukan sistem ras itu tadi karena memang menghemat biaya dan menghemat tenaga. Terus tadi kami juga memang memahami bahwa sistem ini juga berhasil bukan untuk kami sendiri tapi dirasakan nanti kelak juga tadi. Ya ke depan juga dirasakan baik. Nah, cuma ras satu ini cuma kami tebas jalur, pensiangan jalur. Jadi lorongan tidak perlu kami tebas rumput-rumputnya. Terkecuali itu kayu yang tinggi itu yang kami pangkas, itu di antara lorongnya, supaya tidak mengganggu karet. Jadi seluruh jalur kami bersihkan. The rubber clones that are suitable for RAS1 system include PB260, BPM1 and RRIC100. The trees can be tapped when they are five to seven years old. Secara umum, tahapan di ras satu itu meliputi persiapan bahan tanam. Ini bisa menggunakan opas atau okulasi payung satu. Kemudian persiapan lahan dengan tebas tebang. Kemudian diikuti dengan pengajiran, pengajiran karet jarak tanam tiga kali enam atau berisi sekitar 550 pohon per hektar. Kemudian penanaman karet, nah ini ditumpang sarikan dengan padi gogo, hanya pada tahun pertama saja. Setelah penanaman ini penyiangan, kita bisa lakukan hanya pada barisan karet saja. Nah, vegetasi di antara barisan karet ini, kita bisa biarkan tumbuh dengan tetap tinggi vegetasi, itu tidak melebihi tinggi tanaman karet. Kemudian selanjutnya adalah pemupukan. Ini bisa dilakukan sampai tahun ketiga atau karet nanti sudah berproduksi. E, pengendalian penyakit, nah ini penting terutama di e, penyakit batang dan penyakit akar yang ada di karet. Yang terakhir adalah vegetasi yang tadi dibiarkan di antara barisan tanaman itu bisa sebagai salah satu konservasi keanekaragaman hayati atau juga kita bisa menambah pengayaan jenis lain yang dari luar untuk memperkaya spesies yang ada di dalam kebun e, ras satu ini. In on-farm trials in West Kalimantan and Jambi, PB260, BPM1, and RRIC100 clones under RAS1 system produced between 1200 and 1700 kilograms per hectare per year in the second year after tapping started. There are certain advantages of the RAS1 approach. Reduced labour because weeding is carried out only along the rubber row. Reduced herbicide use because weeding is required only along the rubber row. Reduced risk of the spread of alang alang as imperator grass or other vegetation covers the field between rubber rows. Increased productivity, both latex and other products, from using high yielding clonal rubber and other valuable trees. 
It assists in biodiversity conservation, including timber, fruit and medicinal plants, and prevents soil erosion, especially in sloping areas. The farmers in West Kalimantan and Jambi, who tested the RAS-1 technology, adapted it based on their needs and resources. The technology proved to be very flexible, allowing farmers to manage, such as weeding and fertiliser application, according to their specific context. Hence, we observed a range of diversity in RAS-1 in the field. This is an important attribute of RAS technology. Farmers who want to have other valuable trees in their field can also plant or maintain them along with rubber trees. Farmers who want only rubber can remove naturally regenerating trees. The mature stage will look like a monoculture rubber plantation. There are many farmers in West Kalimantan and Jambi who deliberately planted valuable tree species such as Maranti, Tembesu, Gaharu and other indigenous fruits in their rubber gardens. <laughs>